Uh, good morning, good morning, my friends. Uh, thanks for joining me for morning tea. I love to sleep outside. And I would say almost every night I spend some time sleeping outside. I cuddle Rebecca to sleep, read to the girls if I'm going to read to the girls, and kiss them good night. And then after everybody else is asleep, I'll often slip outside and sleep somewhere out around here. There's the stars. I feel like I see shooting stars every night lately. And all the night sounds. During the spring, when I was doing this, we, I wouldn't say we're right on a migration flight path, but we definitely have a lot of migratory birds that come through. And at night, I would hear birds come over. And I'd just be hearing their wing beats. And I remember this particular night when there, in the space of 30 seconds, I heard four different species fly over, some going different directions, and each one had a very distinctly different wing beat. So a group of birds, got a little wren coming up over here. A group of birds, and I'm kind of making those up, but they were very, very different from each other. And and the cool thing that came to my mind is I thought, I bet there's some people that could identify those birds based on their wing beats, on just that sound. I'm sure that one was, was a duck species of some kind. They have that, often that kind of fast uh, wing beat sound. But what were the others? To me, just this mysterious sound, but to somebody else with more knowledge of nature, they might have been able to know who was up there. And so, uh, I guess similar to what I've been talking about lately, you know, how much amazing mystery is around us. But, but here too, recognizing that that there's this language happening all around us. And the more we learn about it and tune into it, kind of the more intimate we can get with nature. Sometimes, you know, often that's just learning about something from a book or a video. But if we sit out here, you know, if I watch that wren, if I listen to that wren, I might start to see things and get to know that little critter much better. I might even, when it flies from tree to tree here, hear the sound of its wings. A fun exercise I used to do with the forest monks at Rewild U, I haven't done this one for a while, is to spend some time blind underneath trees. So I'm underneath maples right now. And if there's even a little bit of a wind, and if, I'm, if I have a blindfold on, I can listen, and the maple tree has a certain sound in the wind that is different than the oak tree sound. This is, of course, very different than aspen sound or white pine sound. But we have this capacity to... It, for instance, underneath a white pine, underneath a red pine, and to hear the, essentially the voice of that tree, how they're different from each other. Intimacy. 
You can get this with the people around us too. You know, I'm finding that as the girls grow up and they develop all their different interests, I can just, uh, you know, step back and just watch. Or I can get up and I can ask them about what they're doing and what they're making, what they're drawing. And that creates a different sense of connection than just kind of watching from afar. So intimacy. Today, I'm going to be trying this. Maybe you want to try it with me. To try to find ways where I can be a little more intimate with the world. And listen a little more, explore a little more, wonder a little more, observe a little more. It takes some time. You can tell in these last few days, <laughs> I've been trying to kind of urge people away from screens a little bit and more toward engaging with non-screen things in your life, whether that's nature or people. Someone wrote the other day, I think it was you, Anya, saying that you're not really doing YouTube anymore. And this, I don't know if this is the only channel or, or one of the only places where you're coming, where you still feel like there's uh, something where you want to get onto a screen. And, and I do appreciate this connection that we're having through this screen. But let's use this as a tool to encourage us to be off those screens a little bit more. And to do that consciously. Not just, okay, I'm going to spend less time off a screen and more time sitting outside or going for a walk in the park. Be really engaged and intimate with that experience. When you go have that experience, when you trade off a little bit of screen time for a little bit of nature time, be intimate with that experience and just see how that feels. Sometimes this can wake us back up and feel like, wow, the world comes to life again. Share your experiences in the comments. I would love to hear how this goes for you. Mm, thank you for joining me today for morning tea. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>